Hello and welcome to a Hearts of Iron 4 achievement seeking video. Today I felt like going after the William Wallace achievement, making sure that my fellow Brits managed to find themselves in America once again and restoring the monarchy. I mean, we do have a coronation coming up at the time of making this video, so I guess it all works out. I can't promise I'll be doing it the most optimal way possible, or I'll be speedrunning it, but I can promise I'll be doing it my way. Okay, let's head in. It does turn out that to form the British Empire, you do have to play as the United Kingdom. Okay, so before we begin, I think it's always a good idea to actually look at what the achievement we're doing requires us to do. William Wallace, as the United Kingdom put Edward VIII in power, enforce an American monarchy, and have both it and Scotland as subjects. So we need to complete the King's Party, which means become a monarchy, make Scotland our puppet, make the United States our puppet, and install an American monarchy, which has the important caveat in ensuring we have a royal marriage to William Wallace, the American. Shouldn't be too hard, right? Surely. Since we've got no time to waste, I guess we'll just rush straight down for a King's Party by starting with a change in course, and getting all of the wonderful abdication events. I feel like at the start of the game is the UK, you have to like quickly reassign all your navy, reassign all your army, and just get everything you need up and running. Since all these ships are basically done, I might as well finish them off. Oh, do I really want to finish this? Ah, this is quite the commitment. Okay, apart from the uh, oversized carrier hull, I think I'm gonna finish most of these. Okay, with the change of course done, we can't do anything now until the King's party is ready to go. So I guess we'll just get some sieves. Oh goodness, the Ethiopian government wants to come here. Honestly, I wasn't prepared for this. I guess they can come. I have no issue with it myself. The real question I'm wrestling with is, if I take partial mobilization now, is this gonna screw me over? I'm gonna go on a limb and say it's gonna be okay, right? Surely. Oh, and it just triggered the eponymous event to which we have all come to. In order for us to get the achievement, we have to insist on a royal marriage. At some point, you always have to divert some resources to a spy agency, I feel. They're just the little buffs you get from them always seem to add up. The cabinet resigns. Ugh, oh, well, good riddance to them. Ruled by furniture. Well, there we go, I think the run's done. What more did we need from this other than that particular ribbon? So as all this is going on, and I'm just getting the events that um, people don't like my king, in the background, I'm training up lots of cavalry division because that's always going to be useful as well as, at some point, starting to get some more infantry. Unless the Dominions decide to all leave me. Goodbye, Dominions. The Thousand Year Bond. Deploy 100 cavalry. Huh. I wasn't even trying to do that. Hopefully some point we're going to get that legendary royal marriage and put this nightmare to an end. The royal marriage of Edward VIII. Hallelujah. And with that, we can now take the King's party once I've finished my focus. So while we've got the officer corps available, I want to take this moment to make sure I get tip of the spear. Um, having that naval invasion, extra 10 capacity, is always something I strive for. And so it is done, with the King's Party completed, Edward VIII is now in charge. And if you go to the focus tree because of the new update, it's actually all collapsed, which is kind of interesting. Um, the focus tree kind of begins to show its true scale, with this is actually everything we have available to us. With that being said, God save the king. So with Britain now secure, the monarchy has been established and a marriage has been made, it's time to focus on our true enemy, France. As such, I've already set up a naval invasion and prepared all the things that need to begin. All we need now is a war goal. This is of course not necessary for what we're doing, but I do feel like going after France just feels like something a monarchist Britain would do. It's raining. With the war in about 100 days, I'm now setting up all of the main uh, invasion points. The horses will be here, the men will be here, and the extras on this little part east of London. With any luck, the French AI has stuck all their troops in places like Africa, in places that uh, we're not going to be fighting them in. So hopefully the mainland won't be too defended, but I think we're going to cross that bridge when we come to it. With appeal to the loyal, the loyal, with appeal to the imperial loyalists done, let's see if we don't have any new decisions. Okay, we do have them, <laughs> but unfortunately we don't have any uh, equipment to actually start them. Of course, <sighs> never lucky. Justification for Nord Pas de Calais is done, and frankly, 
France is done too. Okay, I'm seeing some green there. Some landings, that's good, that's good. Possibly some good pushes too. We just have to be quick, that's the most important thing. If we give them a second to react, they'll screw us. Unless we just walk to Paris, which is always an option too. Okay, no, we can't just walk to Paris, that's, that's fair enough. But we do have Cherbourg, so we should be able to do a decent front line. I'm going to continue microing these individual troops myself for now. It is chaos out here, absolute chaos. Maybe we can get a Norse. Maybe even get a cheeky encirclement while we're here. Oh, maybe a couple of encirclements actually. Almost got them to 50%. Okay, I think we've opened up the front line enough that we can bring in the cavalry to swarm them. And I think I can send my individual units to push out. And from here we should be good. So while that's all going on, let's see if we can't start fermenting some uprisings. I guess we begin with Canada. Who's going to take Paris? Who is going to take Paris? I do believe Paris has fallen. Oh! Um, I guess taking Paris really, really does put an end to that war. Um, okay, fair enough. I don't think I'm going to make this complicated. I think we just take everything. So we do find ourselves in a most interesting position because it appears that Canada is guaranteeing Ireland, which just so happens to be the next nation I'm going to war for. It almost makes me reconsider if I should have done this Canadian uprising decision. In fact, this war is going to become more of a domino effect than I realise. When I declare on Ireland, well, Canada owns the Commonwealth of Nations, and then from there, all of the former Commonwealth nations are going to come back, apart from India. So I should actually start working on naval invasions just to get a little bit of attack on all of them. Okay, we might be getting ourselves the, uh, the, the war goal, but I might not be taking it. Not yet, at least. But luckily for us, I think Canada's also got bigger problems to fry, so hopefully they won't be too terrible to deal with. I think once the final units have managed to wangle their way over to where they need to be, I think I'm going to pull the trigger on this one. While we're here, though, do we think we can hire an American spy? Kate Wall, an American seducer and master interrogator. Honestly, it's not the end of the world if it's a little bit delayed. I think I'm going to go in. And the Americans are lend leasing me. What is it about Americans? Just They really enjoy doing that, don't they? I mean, it's hard to deny the lack of opposition is um, noticeable. The only place I'm struggling is Ireland, and that's because I didn't stick many units here. There goes Ireland, literally just snaked in round the back. New Zealand invasions are away, and Australia can... Oh. I... Oh. <laughs> I was about to say, and Australia can also be taken. Uh, but then we, we won everything anyway, and it didn't even matter. So, unfortunately, the other Canada, the, the bad Canada, is uh, being problematic, because of course they are. I think that's all I can manage. Okay, so we did get Ireland, we got South Africa, we got Australia, and we got New Zealand, as well as all their ships. Um, unfortunately, there is this very peculiar looking Canada we have to deal with. Uh, they were not part of the plan. The good news, however, is we can release Canada as a puppet if we choose to, which I think we're going to choose to, as well as all the other relevant countries too. Oh, the free Canadian Republic becomes integrated puppet. Wait. I now have two Canadian puppets. Huh. I might have messed up here. <laughs> I didn't realise it would join the second. I thought I'd have the option to invite them. Okay, well now we have two Canadas. Since that's the case, I think then it's our responsibility to push for the finish line. And that means taking out the United States. We can get there in 90 days. They don't have too many units either. Okay, I think we reprioritize and we try and get this achievement. Okay, slowly, I think I've got my main lines getting sorted out. It's no easy job, but getting there. I don't think I'm going to be having any naval invasions this time. So, what should we go for? New England? I guess it's in the name, right? A good old-fashioned justification. We don't need any focuses here. 
I can't believe I just I've quickly spawned another entire stack of uh, cavalry just in case something needs pushing. It's usually going to be around this area, I've noticed. Whether it's in the east or the west, you can usually get a decent push going along one of these fronts. Am I wasting my time with a collaboration government? Hmm. Maybe it will be the difference between victory or failure. 15 days to go? Collaboration government in process? Random horses here for some reason? What more do we need? So for the final piece, starting some office plans to make sure anybody who isn't prepared is 100% prepared. Give it a few days. Bing, bang, boom. Good luck, everyone. And they made their own faction. The audacity of it. So I think something I'm really going to be aiming for as I push into America is always going to be looking for places where they haven't fully uh, solidified. Like the mountain fronts here are going to be awful. But here in the more open plains, these horses are going to be able to duck and weave in and out and try and encircle them. Okay, some encirclements, but to be honest, it's not a perfect front line in progress. It's kind of weird. Okay, we've managed to trap uh, some units in Bangor. Honestly, just the less units they have, the better at this point. I'll take anything. In other news, we have a micro front in Buffalo, which I think I'm going to use some of my horsemen to come and deal with. I'm happy to report that encirclement is indeed a success. I also think we've just taken Michigan, which means we can get the other cavalry we've been training up and they can help lead the charge across the Appalachian. Ah yes, now we spread like a growth. <laughs> it's it's going to be much difficult for them now. This is the major breakthrough I was looking for. If you get enough horses, I really can't stress this enough, with enough horses you can overwhelm them very quickly. They're too fast and they don't use too many resources. My good units are still fighting the good fight in New England. This particular horse is going to make a push for Washington DC. In terms of the Western Front, it's always going to be a very slow slog. I just occasionally look over, see if there's any tiles worth taking. Not really right now, but I think the Eastern push is going so well, we shouldn't worry too much about it. Louisville. Let's hope there's no zombie outbreak. And now New England itself is collapsing because without any ability to get supply down, Philadelphia has been taken. Um, it just doesn't look good for them at all. Oh, but they are defending Washington DC. I'll give them that if nothing else. There goes Nashville and San Luis. Oh, we took Washington DC. I missed it. What a shame. We continue to spread as now even the Western Front has started to kind of crumble. I, I didn't even do any microwing over here. This is just natural crumbling because the East is so fallen. I think that Detroit, it's such a meme, but Detroit really does cause the Americas to absolutely break down. As an aside, I should also mention I did build a supply hub here just to make sure we had the extra capability to get do a serious push through into Detroit. We are about to touch down on the Mexican border. I think they're getting pretty close to a capitulation now. I don't even think I need to push all the way. In fact, on the 7th of May in 20 days, we get a collab government up, which might push us over the edge. Four, three, two, one. Done. <laughs> I didn't even capitulate them. Some, a couple of women went into some capital building and I guess they just surrendered. It's as simple as that. So for this one, I think I'm just going to take all and then release them as a puppet as I need to. I feel if I don't do that, I risk getting into some serious water. Lovely jubbly. So let's see about getting that achievement, shall we? What was the exact wording? Okay, we did the King's Party. We need Scotland as a subject and the United States as a subject. Okay, we can do that, right? Scotland shall be released as a puppet. The United States shall be released as a puppet. The British North American territories. Hmm, fair enough. And then, now that we've released them both, do we have a decision to put William Wallace in charge? On the off chance it could be because of I haven't done Unite the Anglosphere, I think I'm going to go down to here and get this just to see if that's the reason. Another thing to consider is while I was doing all that, 
I made note not to take bring into the dominions back into the fold because it causes you to get claims on everything which means the countries that you're going to be puppeting will hate you because you've claimed their territory. If you wait to take this focus after, they won't hate you. With bring the dominions back into the fold done, I'm going to go into Spain. So we can't unite the Anglosphere if we're in a faction with our puppet. Well that's okay, I'll just wait to kick this random India out of the faction and we should be able to fix that. Managed to fix the Canadian borders while I was waiting. With Commonwealth ties done, means we can eventually kick out India. We can destroy the faction that we made. And we can start Unite the Anglosphere, even though we already have uh, Dear Old America as a puppet. Oh, and we get a free war goal on Mexico. Honestly, if I wanted it, I could go get it. But I don't want it right now. So, with Unite the Anglosphere finished, do I now... I see, so you have to complete Unite the Anglosphere in order to install an American monarchy, which I think is going to be our achievement. There it is, William Wallace, the achievement is done, and Great Britain installs an American monarchy. It yet remains to be seen how the American public will adjust to this new form of government, but um, I'm sure they'll love it. That is definitely one of the portraits of all time. So with that, I'll say thank you very much for watching. Um, we somehow did it. We've got a Kingdom of Scotland. We've got William Wallace, or Wallace Simpson, <laughs> on the throne of America. And um, I think we're, we're pretty strong. One of, if not the strongest person in the world. With that, I'll say if you liked, feel free to like, feel free to subscribe. That was a quick little achievement thingy of how I do it. Lots of horses and a quick France. And um, I'm sure there'll be more to come. Bye.